Hello everybody, welcome to Distilled, Brewed, and Reviewed. You are in the sipping den with me, John. Today, what are we sipping? Uh, today we got something a little special. Christine Riggleman Reserve, aged five years, single barrel, Virginia bourbon whiskey from Silverback Distillery. Um... 54% alcohol, ABV, uh, so 108 proof. Signed by the master distiller, Christine. Let me let you look at the bottle. Take a good look at that if you can. Focus. There it is. Look at that. All right. So here's the bottle. It's got some information. It's got the uh, handwritten batch number, barrel number, so on and so forth. 88 of 185 bottles. Batch number 5. I'll explain this in a minute. So, 88 of 185. That's it. 185 bottles of this Christine. Hmm. Let me, uh, Tell you a little bit about this silverback. If I was going to make a distillery, silverback is the best name ever. And what it is is one of the co-founders, uh, Christine's husband. Okay, uh, his nickname with the kids. He has three daughters named him. Uh, they always used to call him Silverback because he went gray early in his protective manner of his daughters and so on. Uh, his name's Denver Riggleman. Um, Interesting guy, very, very interesting. I don't want to get too much into it. It's not so much, but I'm telling you, this dude is is pretty cool. From what I, from I don't know him, but from what I've done the research on him. Um. So him and his wife, uh, Christine, had 50 acres. Christine was a um, very into uh, cooking. Matter of fact, she got accepted in uh, Le Cordon Bleu Culinary School didn't go to support her husband in his career because he traveled. He was in the military. But they had this 50 acres um, in Virginia. And um, they eventually they lived there. They decided to start a distillery. Okay. Now, she is one of the only female, there's not many female master distillers in the country. What's cool is uh, her and her daughter uh, also uh, She's also a distiller there. She actually studied in Scotland, the daughter, and won a few awards. So it's a mother-daughter distilling team. Very cool. Supported by their husband. Does a lot of work there as well. He's also done some cool stuff with his career because he didn't like the way things were going and the laws and the rules. It's, it's just interesting. All right. So um, Denver, uh, Christine, his wife, uh, Abby, one of the daughters, I believe that's the one that works there. Um, uh, they're at the foot of the Blue, uh, Blue Ridge Mountains. They have two stills. Apparently, they've won a lot of awards. They have a calm still and a pot still, and they do. They're one of the only places in the United States that makes um, London dry gin, and they've won a few awards on it. Apparently, it's really good. Uh, I think they make vodka as well. Um, they do get all their grains from the local uh, farmers, produce all their grains. The water comes from basically, I think, off the property. Uh, they have a geo um, thermal system. That one of the ways they um, use energy from the ground, right? Um, they did enter a contest in New Orleans, and they won um, best bourbon and best whiskey, which I believe was for their best whiskey was for their rye. Um, the Christine. What, uh, what Christine does every year, and there's hardly any of this, uh, you could see, uh, with the barrels we said, it was um, not many, right? 185. She goes and she tastes her barrels, and the ones that are unique and really good and different, she bottles once a year under the Christine label. Uh, so we have to trust her palate for this. Um, this has won, as of when I was looking at it, 16 international awards. It may have won more by now. 
So, let's get into this. It's very interesting. It's Look at the color. We'll get more into it in the glass, but it's very dark. Now, I want to show you something else. Um, yeah. This is cool. I don't know if it's pewter. I don't know what the heck this top's made out of. Okay. Uh, it's heavy. This is solid metal of some sort. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful job. Alright, let's get into this whiskey. Now this whiskey is very high wheat. Alright, this bourbon. And I don't have the mash bill. It was told to me and I don't remember. But the wheat is very high. Um, it has to have at least 51% corn. We know that. It has um, malted barley, but it's very high in wheat. So if you like them, wheat it. Oh, and you know what the most important? J-Flow. Jordan. Jordan F. I don't know if he wants me to use his last name. He is a contributor to this channel. Okay. Jeff H. Scooter. And my man right here. Right? J-Flow. I hope he doesn't mind that nickname. Uh are all serious contributors to this channel. I mean, they are soldiers here. Uh, they are welcome to the sipping room anytime to take anything I have in here and drink as much as they want of it. I don't give a damn what it is, okay? They have donated so many bottles to me to let me use for this channel. This is another example. He has graciously, Jordan, allowed me to use this. Uh, the three of them have been involved in the business for a long time. They're involved in different clubs and their knowledge is unmatched. Uh, their palates, I, I just, I can't, I cannot give them enough praise. I cannot give them enough praise for what they've done for this channel, loaning me these whiskeys. All right? Guys, man, you're on the wall of honor here. You're on the wall of honor here. All right, so here's the color. It is dark. Now, it's five years old. Why is it so dark? I don't know. I don't know, Virginia. With the with the temperatures like uh, where this is, uh, warehouse is, or what the char level is, um, this could be a high char level. I don't know. Uh, I just know the color is dark. You're not allowed to add coloring to bourbon, so yes, very beautiful, very very dark. Man, you know what that smells like? It smells like when you smell a barrel that's been freshly emptied. For some reason, that has a certain smell to it, a pleasant smell when you walk into a distillery. They have a fresh barrel, I don't know how many of you. Um, and you smell that barrel, and you get the whiskey and the barrel and everything together with it. That's the initial smell I'm getting. Very pleasant. Beautiful. And me, I have a tendency to pick up fruits. I don't know if it's somebody told me it was genetic one time. I don't know. But I pick up fruit at everything, all right? Um, and I never really thought about it until this person was telling me he was into, he was a doctor and he was talking. He was fascinated by it. But anyway, um, you see something. By accident, I noticed the rim on this, man. You talk about some slow moving legs. This thing is viscous, it's high proof. Um, Probably not chill filtered, but I don't know. Uh, anyway, back to the fruits. I'm getting an orange and a cherry. Apricot. That's what's kind of jumping out at me here. Orange and cherry and apricot smell good. This smells good. I'm getting that wood. You cannot miss it. But it's a pleasant, soft smelling wood. It's not like a cedar or anything that beats the heck out of you. It's just, it's there, it's solid, but it's just there. I've worked in a, um, did some work for, I should say, a cooperage, so I know the smell of wood, all right? Um, but this doesn't have that harsh smell, it's a soft smell of wood. And then an underlying, what I call usual suspect for bourbon which is the sweetness, whether you want to say brown sugar, maple syrup, honey. It's got that sweet. This one I would say a honey. 
kind of like that orange honey. And even the slightest floral flowers. I could smell this all day. This is a nice smelling whiskey. It's got some beautiful, strong smells. Nothing's worse than a weak thing where you can't pick nothing out. And there's, and there's nothing off-putting here. It's strong. It's good. I do not know these people, okay? I have never met them. I'm giving it a good smell review so far, and I'm fascinated by the company I am. Um, uh, anyway. But I don't know them. So smell that chocolate. Man, I could smell. There's certain things. There's. I've had some. Um, I'm looking for one right now. Nothing handy here that I can grab. Um, like um, um, Angel's Envy Rye. I could smell it all day. All right. Some things just smell good. Let's taste it, man. I'm dying to taste this. Thank you for bearing with me. That's my acclamation to uh, sip. I don't ever judge it on the first one. I'm just getting myself used to it. Acclimating my palate to the alcohol, right, so that I do get the flavors. I never do it on the first sip. You don't get the flavors. You get the burn. Get the burn. You don't get the flavor. I'm trying to take the burn away. And I did it. And by burn, I mean the natural kind of burn you get whenever you drink any high proof spirit. Okay. Um, if you drink it, sip it long enough, that burn will go away and you'll get all the flavor and it'll be, become smooth. But if you do what I just did and you kind of swish it around the alcohol in your mouth for about 10 seconds uh, before you swallow the alcohol, uh, you will speed up that process and then the sips become almost no burn and you get all the flavor that's where we're at now now I'm gonna go into the flavor okay I've not paid attention to it up to this point let's pay attention I get a sweet chocolate right off the bat um, no no burn now 108 proof, whatever I said. Um, yeah, 108 because I've acclimated myself to the alcohol and it's worked. Um, so I'm not getting that. I am getting that chocolate. That's honey chocolate. I can I can taste the the wood influence. It's like a sweet wood. It's white American oak, is what it is, but it's putting out some nice wood sugars. Cherry chocolate, honey, wood. The softness of the wheat is a definite. Matter is a slight tone of, 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 of a white wheat bread. Softness that that adds. Um... Chocolate's no kidding. Mmm. What's good? And that sweetness, it's, it's just. And the cherry. That's about what I'm getting out of it. Um, there is a slight nuttiness to it, uh, just adds some more complexity and flavor. Uh, so now I'm getting a um, a nuttiness to it. Probably coming from the wood. It's not got the big spices. Uh, use it the rye puts in there. Mmm, just smell good. I can see where this kicks some butt. I wish it was my bottle. I would do a lot of comparisons. Um, 
I don't want to drink too much of it. This was loaned to me, and I don't know how much it costs, and it's probably, I, I don't know, but you got to respect other people's property. He was nice enough to loan this to me. This is really good. It's soft. For the proof, it is really soft. It doesn't burn now. Of course, I acclimated myself, but the burn's gone. The flavors are really shining through. Um, if I could sit here long enough, it's what I hate about shutting this off, and I sit here and I finish this, and I come up with all kinds of things that I didn't get at first because it takes time to develop, <laughs> and I can't then go back. Uh, I'm sure when I sit here and, and think about this and, and just sip it some more, I'll probably get about 10 more things out of it. I really will. I always do. These are just the initial strong ones coming through immediately. Uh, there's subtle ones. I'll tell you right now. Uh, having not sipped it for a little bit, that the finish is beautiful. Um, not bitter, just a nice finish. I should have put some water uh, just to see how it expands to open it up. That would have brought out a lot more flavor, especially at 108 proof. Um, doesn't need it, but it would have uh, been interesting. Anyway, uh, tell you what. Um, for the old silver back distillery and I think some of their stuff has like a grill on on the label it's cool it's cool it's a cool name man it's, you know silver backs just cool uh, you did a good job you know that I like it if you all can find it I've, I don't know where he got this I've never if I've seen it I didn't pay attention uh, now I will I'm gonna try and get some of this I don't know if this is available in Kentucky this is Virginia, you know, I'm in Kentucky. I'm in the bourbon capital of the world here. They may not be big on important. But if I can find it, I'll get it. I'll re review it for you all. I probably won't get to Christine. But I'll find they have a couple other ones I was uh, saw online that they had. Uh, and I am excited to try it. Heck, I'd like to try their gin. I don't even like gin, but I suppose they've won some awards with it. I don't know what... I guess haven't seen the owner um, doing a kind of a little... Um, documentary very short one I kind of thought he was pretty cool and and the wife and all and it was a, it was a cool story um, so yeah all right everybody silverback distillery right out of Virginia um, the foot of the um, you know f uh, Blue Ridge Mountains uh, if you can find it try it let me know what you think And I'm going to see what this, because what I'm looking for, Afton, Afton, Virginia, that's what I was looking for. Oh, and they have one in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. I think they have something going on by the Poconos in Pennsylvania. I forgot about that. They've expanded. I think they might have sold this, and I don't know if they kept any influence in it. I think they have, well, I know they have because this is new and Christine signed it. So they're still involved in making it. They may have just gotten some backing because they're popular now. People want to invest in it. Um, so Pennsylvania and Virginia. Maybe I can, I can get some more of it. Anyway, thanks everybody. As always, I'll see you on the next one.